Guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. Today in this video, we're gonna do a what to pack for a weekend long trip at your favorite riding spot. So we went to Johnson Valley this past weekend for the King of the Hammers. Oh! I was out there three days and uh, we're gonna go over the items that I took with me. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys the stuff that I did use, some stuff that I didn't use. And this video may help you with what you're gonna pack for your next trip. And as usual, leave your suggestions in the comment section down below. We can all help each other by giving each other advice on what we may do differently. So we're gonna remove the X3 out of the tow hauler first cause it's in there and I can't remove anything else until that X3 is out. And then we'll go step by step all the items here on the driveway. Cause in the toy hauler it might be a little bit too dark as well as the stuff in the truck. I'm just gonna drop it all off here and we'll go over it. So let's do that now. Guys, as far as the X3 goes, I still carry the same tools that I did on a video I did a while back. I'll link that video down below. I got two PRP bags that sit underneath the seats on the rear, and uh, those bags have pretty much all the tools I need. Um, when they're underneath the seats, it's kind of a pain in the butt to get some of the stuff. So for quick access stuff, the Boxo Turo has been amazing. I'm talking about at camp, while riding, I blew my belt. Everything's in this Boxo 2 roll bag. Uh, I do still have to make some adjustments to the bags underneath the seats because I have kind of double items as far as sockets go. Uh, I haven't really gone through it. I just leave the stuff underneath the seats for uh, like sockets, uh, pull straps, um, dikes to cut stuff. Um, but I kind of have the same items in this Boxo 2 roll. And honestly, I don't need the other bags. I, mean, I might keep one just for the straps and stuff that I have in there just in case something breaks. But the Boxo 2 roll has pretty much everything we need. Um, we did a video on this with Trent from Boxo when we were at the Sand Show. Uh, they sent me this, but we now sell them on the website. And I gotta tell you, if you guys seen the videos from Glamis and in Johnson Valley, two times, three times out of the day, we use this Boxo 2 roll, whether at camp or on the trail. So it's been a great addition. So on the X3, besides all the whips and stuff, Tool wise, same as that one video that I'll post down below. And now I have this box of tool roll. Uh, I do want to note in that video, you'll see that I don't run a spare. I still don't. With that said, um, I always run with somebody else. So it's either me and CJ or me and Abraham or me and a buddy. Uh, we always have at least two cars. So if something does go wrong, we get a flat, we can go back to camp and get our spare and the AGM jack that I just got for Christmas that my wife gave me. But if you do run a spare or you do like to go by yourself, definitely consider carrying a spare as well as a jack for that situation. So let's get back to unloading the trailer. <sighs> Obviously, you gotta have yourself some straps to strap down your machine in your toy hauler. I do have these El Cheapos that I got a long time ago. They still have been great. The only thing that I would change is I would wish I got some would have a clevis on it to lock uh, so they don't come off the hook. Um, I mean, they, they never do, but in situations when you're on a trailer, it has better and greater peace of mind if you have that clevis that kind of springs it back into place. Um, I'm gonna eventually replace these with some PRPs. Um, if you guys know, I am sponsored by PRP now, which is great. And um, they have the sub brand, which is Speed Strap, or it may not be a sub brand, but they are under the same umbrella. And we might get some Speed Strap straps um, for the future. But um, I also carry some, you know, items that you're gonna need for your RV, for the uh, jacks, stabilizer jacks. This I use over in the front of the uh, tongue jack, and those I use underneath the stabilizer jacks. They're just blocks. Um, you can also just use wood, honestly. These are pretty much convenient because um, it won't sink into the sand or dirt wherever you're at. Um, I got these off Amazon. I'll leave a link to most of this stuff, but um, just simple blocks of wood will also work. Now all the straps go in these uh, Rugged Radios bags. Um, they're not the cheapest bags, but when you go to the shows, when you go to KOH, when you go to Glamis, and these vendors are there, um, consider buying them at those shows because usually there's discounts. So if you can find a deal while at a show or while at a vendor spot during a event, that's the best stuff to buy stuff. So my toy hauler is not very big, so I am very uh, cramped on space. So um, I do have stuff on this upper bed, including my whips. Uh, you guys already know, 5150 whips, day whips, lighter whips. I got hyper whites, I got hyper blues. Um, I got a ladder for to step onto onto the bed. I also got a ladder that actually helps me get on the roof because this toy hauler didn't come with a ladder. I'll link that one down below. It's just one of those telescoping ladders. It's pretty cool on space. It is a little heavy, but again, the way I don't care about, it's mainly the space uh, to fit everything. I wish I had, you know, an exterior built-in ladder. So um, in here, 
common utensils obviously and you know pieces to cook we just got that uh keurig for the wife she likes to make teas and coffees great i don't mind a coffee in the middle of the night especially in johnson valley it was freezing uh in this drawer a bunch of junk food again utensils spoons knives in here a bunch of utensils again for cooking you know tongs spatulas all that stuff for cooking on the grill down this drawer we do keep like the uh stuff to drain the tanks um they are in containers though because they're also gonna smell and obviously i wash everything but also we have the soaps and the detergents that you would need for a kitchen so we're gonna move on over here this is not a review on the toy hauler if you guys want to review kind of an overview video of the toy hauler i'll link that video down below i did do one on this particular model um it's kind of gonna be similar for a lot of models this is the smallest one that will fit the x3 max and it barely fits Like, I mean, it barely fits. I had to remove the handles in order for the wheels not to hit. I do have a 72 inch RS. So the wider the car, the worse it's gonna be to find a toy hauler that's gonna fit. So this isn't a review on the toy hauler. If you want that video, I'll link it down below. Um, we're gonna get this stuff down right here and I'll show you guys uh, down on the driveway. Really quick, because some of the stuff is actually gonna stay in the toy hauler. We do carry an easy up because sometimes when it's really, really windy or maybe half windy, the uh, awning on the toy hauler can't handle some uh, medium winds and it'll bend it and I don't want to risk it. So sometimes we do just have a easy up for mild winds um, and we stick that easy up with these and some regular tie straps. So these uh, anchor into the ground. We tried anchoring these into the sand and Glamis. Didn't work very well. Um, regular, more softer dirt. Um, they do pretty good. So. I'm not gonna say they're the greatest. I'm not gonna recommend them, but I will leave a link in the description. I haven't used them enough to say they're really good. Honestly, a lot of times we just tie them to the ice chest or we tie them to, you know, a chair or something heavy around camp. So I can't recommend them because I don't use them enough, but they look pretty cool. They're lightweight, but honestly, I feel like they're kind of chintzy metal. Um, feels like they're gonna break really easy, really easily. It's almost like cast aluminum, not 100% on what it is. And then these, I think were separate too. They're not cheap. Um, don't think you really need those, but it's an option. Uh, I caught some chairs over here for myself, my wife and the kids. And then over here we have a heater that, um, well, I didn't think I would need a heater, right? The uh, toy hauler comes with one, but sometimes at night we do leave the generator running and it's easier to not waste gas and just run this heater. Also, the last time we were out, and that was also in Johnson Valley for uh, Thanksgiving, the heater in the toy hauler took a crap and that's because the uh, regulator on the gas lines went bad and we had to use this uh which was martin's he let us borrow it and since he let us borrow that one i bought the same exact one it works amazing from around six o'clock today or actually yesterday uh when it started getting cold i turned this on while the generator was on while the kids were watching tv it warmed up the cab as the outside exterior got cold and when we went to bed it was not cold inside the uh interior so this works really really good i'll leave a link in the description for this thing um i love it over here we do carry another bag this is also a rugged radios bag again i got them cheap because i got them at the show and um i carry all the helmets for the kids this is a skateboard style helmet they like these way more than the full face helmets which are these fox ones because these things are heavy so we usually carry these uh we put like one of those masks that everybody's wearing for the dust and then uh we get, carry some goggles for them uh as far as goggles we carry the havoc racing goggles now for the kids these are a little big but for me and the wife for her cousin for anybody that's riding with us we let them borrow these goggles and they are awesome they are actually a sponsor now of the channel hopefully i get them on the site uh soon and what these are are your favorite goggles honestly because these come off with magnets which uh, is probably my favorite feature and the reason why i love these goggles um i now use a full face helmet with a pumper before that though all i would use is these havoc goggles with my fox helmet and if you do have a fox helmet or any style of moto helmet you're gonna want these goggles because you can quickly switch between the clear lens and a tinted lens in a matter of seconds so i like that i also got their case because it was you know you know awesome to organize everything so everything doesn't get damaged um and we also have over here the milwaukee tools i am going to take that inside i do not leave it in the toy hauler 
just in case someone steals my stuff um that goes back in my garage we'll go over that at the end of the video because i got a bunch of tools in there and i haven't gone over the tools in the video and a lot of you guys have asked me what do i take with me as far as tools before we unload the truck i want to mention real quick i did put a rugged radios in the toy hauler it's awesome i can tell the wife hey we're on our way get the tacos ready and we could uh you know let her know when we're close or you get one of the handhelds that they use uh we just bought the rugged radio the new r1 i believe it's called that also works great it's digital um the new digital stuff from rugged radios is really nice pci is also another company that makes really good radio systems um i kind of go towards rugged because uh, we see them more often i guess in our area when the events we go to but pci is just as great and if you guys choose them i would say there's pretty much on the same level so uh, let's go ahead and unload the truck this does work great by the way uh, i highly suggest having one other things that i mentioned on that toy hauler video is the weight distribution uh hitch that i'm using and that is the equalizer it's been great it's a little noisy i'm not sure if i'm supposed to add grease or something right here but i wouldn't think so or else it uh get caught up with dirt but it works really really good i mean i i'm pulling my thing with a 1500 i got a you know over 2000 pound machine in the back and it it does the job and i, I feel safe in it so um, i'm not saying i'm taking crazy wins but i just feel safe another thing i didn't mention is this new jack that i got or not new it's probably been on there for six months but the electric jack power tongue jack uh the company's lipper i got it off amazon it's been great to me so far except for one of the buttons broke but i did replace it with a generic button i found on amazon too and uh that works good too so just uh, thought i'd let you guys know on that because a lot of people like to ask and i'll put this thing off i'm gonna park this trailer where it's supposed to be and uh We'll get on to unloading this stuff. Crap. Hey man, this is not easy work. It's always a lot of work. So we start off with this Milwaukee tower light. This thing works awesome when you're out cooking at night. Uh, we do carry that. Uh, we have two of them, but I only take one. No need to carry more than you need, so, um, which I'm very bad at that. I tend to carry a lot more than we need. So we got the kids little power wheels here. This is a Can-Am looking machine. It looks great. It works. It doesn't work the greatest, but we had it fail twice. Uh, there's an actuator for the steering because this is remote controlled as well. Um, that went out and also this little brain box in here went out this blue one um, To be fair, they send us replacement parts for free, but I mean Kind of sucks. It doesn't go very far. The range isn't very far as far as like how long they could use it um, And they put like a real battery in this a decent battery. What the fuck is that? Jesus Christ, that's how you know you're in the ghetto anyways if they put a decent battery in this thing it would be a lot better so that power wheels is okay but this would be great this is uh definitely something you would want to get for your kids i mean if you have the space for it that's another thing we're going to deal with hopefully it'll fit in the front section of my toy hauler uh, so we can fit both the x3 and the kids razor that would be dope so we always keep a spare at camp tensor 33 on a method 405 we got a uh, ice chest always have plenty of drinks in your ice chest i brought this milk knowing the kids were going to need it and sure enough they drink some um plenty of gatorade and waters um we always carry another separate ice chest for meats and other stuff that needs to be refrigerated like butter and stuff whatever doesn't fit in the refrigerator and the toy hauler we put in another cooler um i do have my generator here uh this one i normally don't take it out and put it in the garage i leave it in the camper but uh we had a little issue which is my fault it was running low on oil martin saved the day he had some oil in it so i did take it down so i could give it a little bit of maintenance change the oil and um probably clean out the air filter too maybe check the spark plug make sure it's not you know running a little lean or something but it's been great it worked all night for three nights straight um and yeah i can't say enough about this generator i'll leave a link to this one this is a generator inverter i think they call it it's a uh, 4000 starting watts 3500 running watts i also carry this pretty uh, decent sized fire extinguisher we have another one a smaller one that's inside the toy hauler i keep this one outside right here because um you know we do some shenanigans sometimes at camp 
and we did some Saturday and uh, this is always good to have. And the reason I got this was for this uh, new item that I got, that I got the idea from my buddy Martin that I've seen before, didn't really know much about them. Uh, once we used them, I had to have one and that is a smudge pot. So the smudge pot is amazing. We don't have to carry any wood. The fire output it puts out is great. It runs off diesel um, and I couldn't be happier with that. I keep it in a trash can. Same thing, got the idea from Martin and we got an extension on it and we got the other top piece over here um yeah it is definitely a must-have uh smudge pot usa on instagram that's where i got it from here in fontana california and it's definitely a must-have uh everybody at camp wants one now for that trash can we do carry the big black trash bags this is all the trash from our trip um definitely keep the desert clean those bags were awesome they're like the yard style for like you know cleaning leaves and stuff those are the heavy heavy duty ones i love carrying those uh we got this new horseshoe game then my buddy CJ bought me for Christmas. Uh, two pins, these, and obviously the horseshoes. All right, here's the other ice chest that I carry for, uh, you know, your meats, your butters, your eggs, your bacon. I also got a regular uh, floor jack. Now this, um, I don't use it really for the X3. I use the AGM jack for that. But if I have to uh, replace a spare on uh, maybe the truck or the toy hauler, this is gonna work a lot better. Um, and I was told you guys in the videos, Pro Ego extension and base for the uh, Harbor Freight Jack works great. Got some extra straps in here. This is the propane tank for our, um, you know, cooking machine, our uh, skillet there. I'll get to that in just a second. And then up here, I got red, white, and blue All America fuel tanks. These are VP Racing fuel tanks. Um, a lot of you guys have these. I have three different colors for three different fuels in my case. Um, the white ones I'm using for E85. And let me tell you right now, it's a pain in the butt to carry all these fuels, but E85 in the white tanks. I also carry E85 in the actual toy hauler. The red ones I use for the generator that takes regular gas. And now because we have a smudge pot, uh, the blue ones I have diesel. I was actually trying to find the yellow cans for diesel because normally uh, yellow cans are associated with this diesel fuel, but they don't. They didn't have any at uh, Chaparral, and I got the blue ones. Now, how can I resist? You got red, white, and blue. America. So I take 15 gallons with me. Turns out when you run the smudge pot full blast, it ain't gonna last the four or five hours that would normally last on five gallons. So we went through it a lot faster. Um, that's from Saturday shenanigans. And then uh, over here we got some toys for the kids. But um, that's pretty much everything on the truck. We also got some cones over there, sorry. That's everything on the truck. I do have a couple more things inside the, um, the Silverado. Pretty much it's just the AGM jack and I have another impact over there that I don't have on my tools. So uh, before we get to the tools, let me show you some of the electronics that I take with me that you guys probably won't be using because you guys aren't wasting your time making videos, but all the electronics I take with me to make these videos um, and make the videos that you're gonna see soon from the Johnson Dolly trip of King of the Hammer. So let's get to that. All right, so real quick, I do actually carry another phone now. We got this for Verizon. So now we have Verizon and T-Mobile, kind of two different worlds. In some areas we get T-Mobile, in some areas we got Verizon, but if we can have communication some way, somehow, it's always great. Um, obviously, this is the pack that I carry with me on the x3 it's got your battery chargers multiple batteries i got uh three gopros in here i got this cool new uh, telescoping lens for the canon camera that we have in here uh this is all to try getting some of the better shots um i got that well i had this for a while but i got the lens specifically to try getting some of the shots while watching the racers for king of the hammers because the gopros can zoom in very well if not at all i never use the zoom because they're kind of sucks so that canon camera came in clutch this weekend uh we also got the gopro 360 here which i'm still playing and trying to perfect how we're going to mount this uh where i'm i'm going to make some modifications to uh the footage that you will see from this last trip so over here i have a um tablet that i carry with me now and this worked awesome because uh martin had a gopro and i stole some of his footage i got an sd card adapter reader and i put some of the footage on here so i don't have to carry my laptop and then from this i'll take it to the laptop in here is my new favorite toy that i'm still learning how to use this is a first person view um drone like i said in some of the previous videos that we purchased one of these it is so freaking awesome to use it is scary to use as well because this can go up to 90 miles an hour and when you put it in full manual mode um, it's got this cool goggles that you see through while you're uh, using it. It's got this cool Xbox style control. Um, and then the uh, unit itself, this crazy drone, it is kind of heavy. And I would definitely be scared to hit somebody with this. So I, I'm very cautious with this thing because it could get you in some trouble. Um, it is very fast. 
looks cool matches my x3 and put some wrap on it um but it is very very fast very dangerous but gets some of the coolest shots that a regular drone can get so i really like that i have another drone and we'll show you guys that it's in the toolbox some stuff i forgot to mention i got another bag full of all sorts of freaking accessories uh a wi-fi for the kids uh my fi whatever it's called for verizon mainly i contact my wife if she don't have service uh, with t-mobile she'll have service with verizon a bunch of mounts for the gopros chargers for all the drones chargers for you know individual chargers for like the lights that i can carry sometimes um a crap load of stuff let's be frank a crap load of stuff in here here's the agm jack i have not used this yet except for using it at home it worked great in test here in the garage but that's not the same as using it in the real world so it is an expensive piece it's a very very well made piece we'll go over it in the future once i actually use it um in the real world whether that be in glamis or johnson valley or el mirage um once i use it and, and get to know the product more how fast it's usable um we'll, we'll let you know more on that so i don't want to just tell you it's great uh, I also have this impact that I left in my truck. Normally goes in the toolkit. Um, I got plenty of radios. Got one for the wife, one for me. This is a R1. Uh, these were great, but also it's nice to carry a uh, a bale fang, which uh, you could use to go into certain stations. For example, we were listening to the race ops uh, and the operations from the race uh, Ultra Four Racing, and we could hear what was going on, whether that be someone broke down, who's in the lead, or whatever. Um, it's nice to have of course all the accessories that you need for that I also carry a headset that just goes in your ear. I think it comes with it uh, So when I'm using the drone, I can actually tell the boys. Hey, you're too far turn around because the drone only has so much distance uh, So if I get like footage of Abraham, which we did on Saturday kind of going through some stuff um, It wasn't the best footage because there was some the camp is so big everywhere around us But I was able to you know follow him and uh, if he had the radio working that day uh, I would be able to tell him hey uh, go to the left or go to take the section over here or watch out for that car whatever so it's always nice to have a headset on there let's see what did i miss before we talk about the tools um i think the fuel i want to talk about the fuel how much kind of fuel we use so you guys can get an idea if you're new to the sport how much fuel you're going to need so normally uh, i think i run through a lot more e85 in this trip we're there three days pretty much two full days one half day and sunday morning we literally I just packed up and left but I went through three of these white tanks, which was my E85 for my vehicle, my X3. Normally, it's easily twice that. Like, easy, easy, twice that. And then for Glamis, it's even worse. So uh, that's why I carry the fuel in the um, toy hauler, which is another 40 gallons or something like that. So the reason we didn't use it as much this time is because the King of Hammers. It, there's so many people, it's a lot going on. Mainly we're going there to check out the carnage. Um, if we we're going to Johnson Valley on an off you know, week, not in an event week, then definitely would have more uh, riding time and a lot more fuel will be used. So when it comes to the gasoline, the red tanks for my generator, uh, where the hell is it? Oh, I'm sitting on it. There it is. Um, I will only used about one and a half of these tanks. So, you know, seven and a half gallons roughly. There's still about two gallons in the red tank. Um, but I kind of knew that I wasn't going to use as much as usual because the wife wasn't there, you know, all three days. She was only there like a day and a half. So I have another red tank that I would, if it was going to be a three day, you know, um, event for me or week for me with the family, I would definitely take the extra tank and have all 15 gallons of fuel because uh, they will run the generator a lot, a lot more. She would use it for, you know, the microwave, the, the, the freaking uh, Keurig machine, the AC for the kids, depending on the season and you know how hot it is. Uh, a lot of other reasons she would use the fuel. And I might even need more, like on a hot summer day, we need to run the AC a lot more. So uh, to power the generator, you might need more fuel. So this time I only used about seven gallons. I would say 15 to 20 would be uh, more for a three day uh, trip. Um, when it comes to the diesel fuel for the smudge pot, I would say, uh, we went through 15 gallons. I would say 15 gallons would normally be enough on a mildly cold day. If it's really cold, below 30, like it was in Johnson Valley this past weekend, you're gonna use more fuel because it gets colder sooner. Around six and up, it's already too cold. You need to put a jacket on. And for the kids, you wanna consider turning a smudge pot on so they get some heat. I'm sure the wife would appreciate that. Um, the fuel, I think I'm gonna get another tank to make it 20 gallons for um a three-day trip um we used two of these tanks in one day and one night 
but that's because we're running the smudge pot on full blast. Dude, this guy's over here trying to catch us hey, on fire. What are you doing, Frankie? Just relax. <laughs> Why are you going in circles? Guys, <laughs> that's your move or what? Oh. Our goal! And you'll see that video. We were just freaking burning the soot out of the, the smudge pot. But so normally I would say 20, 20 gallons would get you through a three day trip. So uh, that's fuel. Let's get onto the tools because a lot of you guys are gonna want to see that. For the pack out system that I carry, um, a lot of you guys might have the option to just have a regular toolbox that you carry all your tools in built into your toy hauler. That's great. Most of us are gonna carry a pack out because if we go say in our trailer and we're sleeping in tents, Whatever it may be, the pack out system you just throw in the back of your truck. You don't have to unload uh, a full toolbox. And what's nice is it's piece by piece, um, and it's not you know carrying one whole heavy item at once. Uh, I do have other pack outs over here that I don't really use all that much yet. Um, I have used this upper one for a lot of you know scenarios. I tried putting my uh, first person view drone in there, but it didn't fit. Um, the other ones are organizers. This one I do want to incorporate because it has sliding drawers, um, and that's a lot more convenient than the other ones that you have to actually take off the other pack outs in order to get to. Uh, but first, on top, we have a cooler that we always carry to vendors. I keep drinks, Capri Suns, and freaking Gatorades all in there for the kids. Over to the uh, left here, let me get this out of the way. Over to the left here, I usually kept the power tools. So I got a 3 8 impact. I normally carry the half inch impact in there as well, but I was using it. Um, let's see what else is in here. These are some gloves that my wife bought me. It was really, really cold riding and you could not ride without gloves, uh, which is another video I may do in the future when it comes to steering wheel and glove selection because I learned something very fast. If you're gonna wear gloves, the steering wheel is very important. But anyways, um, in here, I also have this top off from Milwaukee. Most of the products are Milwaukee. No, I'm not sponsored. It's a hard, hard, hard to get sponsored with them apparently. Um, I need a lot more subscribers. But anyways, this is the top off. I charge my GoPros with this. So instead of running the generator full blast all the time, um, I got this uh, USB charger thing. Let's see, where is it at? It's gotta be in here somewhere. Uh, here it is. Uh, this USB charger, and it's got three USB cables, and I could charge all three. Well, I have four, but I could charge three of these battery packs for the GoPro batteries. So a lot of batteries being charged at once with the top off. And I don't have to run the generator. I could just use the Milwaukee batteries. When I do run the generator, I have another Milwaukee charger, you know, tied into the toy hauler or built into the toy hauler. So when you do run the, the generator, I could charge this on the um, the charger. So that's great. That works awesome. I love having that top off. I'm considering getting another one to have while you're sitting at camps, so you could charge your phone. This, I believe, is another one of those... Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, tree hugger or tree rope or root, tree root puller, tree puller, whatever it's called. You can wrap it around a trunk and uh, help pull yourself out or help tow somebody. That works great. I keep most of my batteries, my extra batteries in here. So there's one, two, I got a 12 volt. Uh, looks like I got some scissors in here, which I normally I keep in the bottom box. I got a charger for the rugged radios, these blue ones. Um, I also carry a separate charger because this one's different. This is one of those base style. But I do carry the chargers in here too. I got a shovel just in case. You never know when you're going to need this. Uh, I got this from Rhino for like 20 bucks or 15 bucks when uh, they had the um, the super swap um, over in... I don't even know where it was. Probably Costa Mesa. Here, here we have these caps. I don't know why I have those. I don't really need them. I got these cute little pliers from Milwaukee. Um, we got zip ties. Can never have enough zip ties. These are the big HVAC style. Um, they work great. Um, I carry some in the car as well. And these are more regular size to zip tie whatever you're gonna do, like a wire and harness or something. I also recently, right before we left, I was like, man, I should probably take some with me. These hose clamps. Um, you never know where you're gonna need some of these. You might spring a leak or you might have an issue. So I started carrying a couple hose clamps. I might get a bigger size too to carry. So in this box, I carry this in the back of the X3. Uh, this box will carry the drone. This is my regular DJI um, Air. And this one works great when you're stationary and there's a lot of action around you, then you can film all the action around you. Like say the sand drags. I wanna film the sand drags, that's what I use. Now this is an old drone. I recommend the newer one because this one gives me a lot of issues, but it has worked so far. I will upgrade this eventually, but for the time being, it's great. I use the FPV drone that I showed you over there uh for more action shots which i'm still practicing but this is more for um catching the action that's stationary to you so i got the drone the controller some batteries and the other stuff i need right here i usually carry my gopro 360 uh, when i'm not using it 
it stays in here as well as maybe a charger or two over here are slots for some gopros as well as another charger and a battery and another gopro and just a bunch of stuff uh media related this is a, a nine foot i think um extension it goes a lot farther but it's a nine foot extension i tried using this with the gopro 360 once at johnson valley when we were at the jumps but i didn't know how to use the 360 camera and that footage got lost so uh, we'll have to use this another time and see if that works. So this could kind of be like maybe a drone style shot, but using a GoPro 360. So that's pretty cool. Again, for stationary type of video. All uh, right here, we got one of these uh, totes or crates, whatever you want to call it. I carry this little blower to blow out all the dirt and debris that goes in the toy hauler. Uh, kind of blow it out or blow the car off if you have to. It's not the most powerful. I'm not sure if this is a better option than the small mini 18 volt version. Not the big one. I mean, you could carry the big one and that's probably better if you have the room for it, but they also have another 18 volt version that's a lot smaller um, and it might be better than this one, I'm not sure. Extra wire. And in here, there's plenty of those butt connectors uh, to make a connection to replace a section of wire. Now, I'm not gonna do installs or anything like that, but it will get me by. Uh, there's also electrical tape in there just in case I need that. Um, I got some paracord just in case I need to tie something off. Uh, this works great. And right here we have, let's see. Um, I have some flashlights in here, some of my lasers. When we go out to certain spots, like say King of the Hammers, you can laser and point at stuff. That's fun, as long as you don't point at somebody's eyes. We have a battery jumper here. Uh, this works to jump the machines, the X3s, the razors, whatever you got. This will probably even jump uh, a Duramax. I've seen it done. It, uh, these are pretty cool. So this is a 2000 amp version. Uh, GB70, I'm assuming is the model name. But this works great. This is one of those Nocos. I'm really happy with that. Uh, we have a small first aid kit. We do carry a lot larger first aid kit in the toy hauler. Uh, that was a video I was planning to make with that company, but uh, it didn't get done. But it's a real nice like backpack style full of emergency uh, supplies. And that was nice to have too. That's in the toy hauler. It was in the upper bed. That's why I didn't show it to you guys. Um, so that's there. And this is more chargers for... Um, the uh, power tools, excuse me, the power wheels for the kids. And then this is just to, uh, you know, use on your impact or, you know, your drill to raise and lower the uh, jacks for the trailer. Sorry, I'm getting tired, guys. I'm running out of breath here. Let's take that out of the way. Let's move this. Man, I gotta organize all this stuff all over again. It's all good. Uh, under that, I got this kit here. So I haven't used this as much as I used to, and that's because we got that new Boxo kit. That Boxo kit has been really, really handy. It's just really easy to roll out, and you have multiple tools, not just your sockets. You have, you know, the pliers, the little pry bars. I've also added some of my stuff that I think I would need in there. Uh, but this kit is also, also really nice because it goes in the pack out, snaps into place really easy. So this is all quarter inch and three eighths. Um, it is a socket set and mechanics, you know, ratchet set. Uh, it's got your extensions, it's got your swivels, it's got, you know, deep and shallow, metric and standard. Um, and then these trays come out if you need to pull them out, uh, which is great. I really like this kit. Uh, since we got the box hole, I haven't been using it as much but it's definitely a um, wanted item. I actually did use the ratchet and 11 millimeter on uh, my um, my Max GoPro 360 uh, extension pole setup that I have going on, but uh, that's a great plus. In the bottom is where I carry most of my other tools. So uh, up top here we have, you know, there's another charger for the lasers, a lot more zip ties. Uh, this socket belongs over here. We got a tire patch kit. I do carry one in the X3. Again, a link to that video. Uh, we have a torch there, some sockets for axle nut removal. Um, this is a ratchet, it gives you a lot of leverage. So I like carrying this guy. Uh, these sliders, I haven't used them. They're for that equalizer jack. Let me know if you guys use those. Uh, this is a socket for my, um, what do you call them? Uh, uh, the wheel lug nuts because they have that spline. I'll have one in the car and one here and then here Oops These are a bunch of different sizes of bolts and nuts if something comes loose or lost or broken But these are all you know 8.8 .8 grade and up and um, yeah, it's nice to have that So over here we have some pliers. We got a little bit of JB weld. Not sure if it's still good I should probably check it paperwork here uh, some pliers needle nose wire crimpers for wire repair uh, this is another charger for a laser another set of pliers a flathead screwdriver 
uh, a ratchet for half inch. All the extensions, adapters, and universal joints that I need. Uh, well, actually, the extensions are somewhere else. Um, this is actually the tool they give you for the Rockford Fosgate speakers. Uh, a couple eyelets. That should probably go in the other bag. Another adapter. I do carry this uh, cobalt, you know, drill bit kit from Milwaukee. A small one, but it might get you out of a pinch. And I carry, usually, I didn't take it on this trip, I usually carry the right angle drill. Not the big one, but the right angle one. Uh, Cause that one fits in more spots. I also carry the grinder wheel sometimes. I forgot that one here as well, but I do have some cutoff wheels for the, that little grinder. A level, not sure why I would need this, but it's in here. A uh, plastic tool to remove some plastics if I have to. Some more, you know, screwdriver sets. Um, an extra lug nut. Anyways, let's get this out. Now, I'm sure I'm gonna be missing a lot of stuff, guys. Uh, welcome, you're welcome to, uh, you know, leave down in the comment section down below what else I may need. And uh, I highly appreciate that. You know, I don't know everything, so. Um, I got this big giant half inch ratchet with a swivel. This is gonna work great for those uh, real stubborn, um, big heavy nuts and bolts. Then we have this guy here. This is a Tekton um, socket set. I have that socket set, but that's only three eighths and one quarter. This is all half inch. So if I need to remove something in half inch, well, there it is. That's what we're gonna use. Um, obviously I got the half inch impact that I take with me for that little kit. Uh, but not everything is hex. On all machines, you will see a lot of uh, Allens and Torx on the uh, side by sides. So right here, I have an Allen set that I actually use every day. Well, not every day, but every time I'm in the garage, if I'm working on a machine, I use this all the time. Uh, I take it with me. And then same thing for the Torx set. This is also made by Tekton. Um, these products are not the most high quality. Uh, I'm not saying that because they failed on me. They've actually never broken and they work great. Uh, but, you know, there's other brands that are a lot better. Tekton is not well known. Uh, the black one, uh, I, don't even, I don't even know who this black box is made by. Um, but the Tekton stuff is pretty cool. And um, I use it for here at work and out in, you know, in the middle of nowhere. It's always going to come in handy. So uh, I use that stuff. I'll try to leave links for that, all these tools, most of the tools, to get you started at least in the video description down below. But... Um, uh, some of the stuff might be discontinued or they change the name or they change the box and you know kit itself I do carry some scotch bright just in case a uh, belt pops and I need to clean up the clutch sheaves That's always good to have um, I don't know why I have this. I've never been a fan of this stuff, but this is a tire uh, Tire uh, What do you fix a flat? So this is like a type of liquid that will solidify a hole or stop a hole from leaking I mean it might work. I'll put it in a trailer tire. I don't care about trailer tire, but I wouldn't put it in my truck tire. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about those. I uh, got another breaker bar for half inch. Not sure if I need this anymore because I got that bigger one right there. Um, ouch, mother lover. Right here, I got a torch. This can light up my uh, smudge pot or the grill if I have to. Um, did I talk about the grill? I don't think I talked about that grill. I'll go back and talk about that grill. Um, let's see. Uh, wrench sets, metric and standard, nothing special. Uh, these, is I got, I got just a bag and I used an old kit that I had. I have an old Craftsman made in the USA or wrench set um, that I've had since my uh, you know first days working at a dealership. So I put those in these Tack Life bags. Um, I'm not gonna recommend those. I would recommend the Milwaukee wrench set which I use at work, uh, they have they are pretty good. So I'm gonna recommend those instead of these, but I probably will do the bags because um, the bags work great. The Craftsman, there's nothing wrong with them. I think they just don't make them in the USA no more. Um, and not that the Taiwanese is bad because I think that's where the Milwaukee ones are made, but the Craftsman, I mean, Sears is gone and I think you can only find it at Lowe's and I don't shop at Lowe's, so I don't know. Uh, and then at the bottom, there's nothing much to it. Uh, this is, I think for the electric uh, tongue jack on the trailer just in case something fails you can actually use this and then some wd-40 and a fairly sized pry bar and this uh, milwaukee knife which kind of sucks but it is what it is i got it look it's bent right there oh that's user error but it's not the greatest knife so yeah, it is what it is nice to have it than not have it uh i think i covered most of it i'm gonna show you guys the um the grill that i use because i do want to mention some stuff that if you're gonna you guys are gonna purchase a grill like that you guys might want to know so trying to think um i do have over there a uh flag pole and led light 
We did a video on that too. I'll link it down in the description. That's for the trailer. Um, I also have like a bag that carries my uh, whips from my X3, the 5150 whips. I didn't show that off on camera, but that's a, you know, a bag for uh, carrying my whips. Obviously, in a toy hauler, you're gonna carry all your food and um, you want a bunch of blankets, all the sleeping stuff, all your clothes, all that stuff. I didn't cover any of, any of that. That's all personal items, you know, deodorants, toothpaste, shampoo, all that good stuff. So that's other stuff you're gonna have to think about when uh, making a, your purchase of a toy hauler. You gotta take the whole kitchen with you because you got all sorts of other stuff you're gonna need to take. So let's wrap it up. I'll show you guys the grill and make my comments on the grill. And then uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Like always, I thank you guys for watching these videos. And uh, it's fun. So, um, glifeutv.com if you want to support the channel by buying some products, including merchandise and parts. And uh, if you want to do a little bit extra, big shout out to my Patreons. You can join Patreon and donate $2 a month. It's not much. But it helps the channel tremendously. So, right here we have my skillet. This is uh, a next grill, I believe. Let me see. Next grill, it's not a Blackstone. I think Blackstone is a better brand. I think that's what the people tell me. Uh, this is a pretty good skillet. I love cooking on these. It's really easy and simple. Uh, cleaning can be a chore, especially when you get sand in there. But all you gotta do is scrape it off. Uh, there's plenty of videos how to use these and season the grill so stuff doesn't stick to it. But they're great. Um, the only thing that I need to mention on this, so you guys know, when you're out in the middle of nowhere and wind starts hitting you, it can be a problem. So I had to add these uh, L channel brackets on three sides to help with the uh, air blowing out my fire. But um, that still didn't help it completely. And why I'm saying that is because this thing doesn't really have a cover and I think on the next one that I buy it's gonna need to have a cover and I've seen them before at Home Depot I believe where it's a skillet just like this but it has a grill cover just like a traditional propane grill and I think that would be a way better option for you guys out there in the desert now the size I like a smaller one because I'm, I'm kind of tight on room but you're gonna buy one depending on how much family or whatever goes with you and friends uh, go with you on your trips but that's it oh and the table I almost forgot the table uh, but that's it we're gonna end it here I gotta clean up all this stuff I gotta shower and I gotta edit this video and the Johnson Valley videos I can't wait to show you guys the King of the Hammer videos they are awesome lots of carnage lots of fun boy it's a good time we'll see you guys